Land. I'm JD and welcome to my channel and thanks for all the folks out there who subscribe to my videos and who watch me do some crazy watch uh, watchmaking work on watches. Latest was the Tissot and pocket watches. And as you can see over on the right hand side, I got some cool tools in the mail and I don't even know. I know that these are normally for, tur for uh, screws, for grabbing screws and turning them, but the strange part of this tool here is, is, if you, is that groove. Those are my guitar fingernails, by the way, so just disregard them for now, but there's the back of my hand. Anyway, so see that groove that's in there? That's kind of odd. So if anybody knows what that groove is for, I'm going to look these up because they're, these are tipped. There's little grippies there, and you typically would just move that up, hold it right here with your hand, and then that would go up to squeeze that end in, right? Like that. So I'll move the hand down a bit here. But that would go up to squeeze the end in like that. So they're, they're grabbing on to probably a screw. But are these for the balance screws? Because uh, that groove makes no sense for, a balance, for grabbing balance screws. And I do have other, uh, other screwdriver grabbers, whatever you want to call these things. And they came in a pair of two. But if I look at some of my other ones... Um, this is this as I grab this it keeps falling back anyway here's my other one here as you can see there's no groove in this one it's groovy but there's no groove there are slots on the inside of this so it just helps you grab the screw a bit better as you can see there's a little tiny slot on the inside and that just helps you grab the screw so if you have a balance like this one here it's found a balance and you're trying to remove a screw. This one's been stripped by moi a few times. And, you, and you're grabbing the screw with this, right? You're taking your thumb, like so, and you're pushing it up. So let me move my camera back actively. Somebody asked me what kind of camera I had, and I just told them, I sent them the note, and it's Amazon. And it zooms in quickly. Just uh, if you watch the videos, I have a review on this camera in my videos. So here you're just grabbing the screw on the edge like this. I should put my watch making glasses on. Then you're tightening this and it just grabs the screw and now when you unscrew it, it's perfect because these screws are in but they're not in super tight, otherwise you're going to break them. So that's fine for this one here, but what are these ones for? That's the question. And see how they're indented here? They're very well made. I didn't, I paid a lot for them, so, so they better be well made. But they've got this, they're not for grabbing these screws because they wouldn't have this little, this little indent. So I'm trying to figure out what the heck are they for? What, what are you grabbing? Uh, what watch part are you grabbing where you need this little slice in the middle um, of the grabber? So if anybody under knows the answer to this, please uh, get a hold of me and tell me. So today's video is not about this. So it's just chatting away here. Chatty McChatty Pants. Going for ribs tonight, man. Ribs. I'm all excited. So do you remember this adventure? Remember when I was basically trying to figure out how the heck I use this and the big problem on... And this was the diameter of this baby, so this had a diameter of 7 millimeters. And of course, all my tailstocks and my lays were 8 millimeters. So I was like, what the hell do I do to fix this? And what I wanted to do, this, this is for repivoting, right? So you slide this, you put that in your tailstock, like that, and then you pull, push this in. Let me flip cameras here so you can see more of this here. Let me flip cameras. All righty then, all righty then. I did an impersonation of Jimmy Stewart. I had a boss years ago. I work in aerospace, and I had this boss, and he used to, and I, and I was talking to his brother-in-law, uh, having dinner, and I didn't realize, actually, it wasn't his brother-in-law. It was a guy I knew, and I didn't know his wife was this guy's sister. And I started impersonating him, and then so I said. Well, 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 yeah, 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 no, JD, you need to take take concern and care of, of, of these things. That's my bad, Jimmy Stewart. Well, 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 you know, back when Tiny Tim was here. Anyway, so, and then the sister went and told his brother, and his brother came into my office and said, so, so I, I hear you've been impersonating me. I was like, oh, shit, I'm in trouble. I was a young engineering guy. Anyway, this thing, the way this thing works is you take, you have to take the tip here and I have, this is the alignment tip, the alignment tip. So this comes in lots of parts, but this is, this is a basically J-cut and tips for uh, burnishing stuff. 
but then there was the, this is the alignment tip. So you're using that as I showed in another video to align these holes perfectly. So when you, when you loosen this up here and you turn this like that, let's use a big hole and a basically uh, aligning, like putting that in the, into that hole. And then there it's nice and tight, push down a bit like that, make sure it's tight. And then you tighten this up somehow to align it right there. Now it's tight, now it's aligned. Now the second thing I would do, as I showed you in a past video, I think, is I made, I took one of my little made in China screwdrivers for PCB boards, like that, and I actually tapered this baby down, right? So I gave it like a three taper, three MT taper on it. And that way I could stick it in the end of this, like that, and it's pretty snug there. And that way I can stick this in the end of this, like that, just nice and carefully, Stickensy N in the end of the Stickensy. And then when it comes out the end here, as you can see again, it lines it with the part, say it's a, uh, a balance you have sitting here in your, in your uh, and you've got your headstock is holding the balance, and then you want to lay this baby inside that and then drill the pivot. It would be much smaller, of course. I'd use one of the smaller holes, but this lines it up perfectly to drill the pivot, right? So that's the theory, but my big problem was this baby, um, I keep, I'm keep i keeping this little tip in some Rodico so I don't break it off. Um, but even if I break it off, I can square it out on the end and reuse it. So, so just push that into the Rodico so it's not gonna be snapped off. And, Put that in the bag for now. In the bag. The big. I had this uh, admin assistant years ago that would would say big instead of bag. And she'd say, are you going to the bank? She goes, yeah, I'm going to the bank. She'd say bink. And big was bag. And egg was egg. Ig. Ig. So I'd tease her and I'd make her say words. Anyway, how cruel am I? So... So anyway, you put this in to line it, you put the other one in, but my big problem with this was this was a seven, uh, seven millimeter diameter. So I went on the intranet and I ordered seven millimeter diameter inner and eight millimeter diameter outer. So these are the, the tubes. So I ordered brass and I ordered stainless steel, right, to see what would work. Then when I went to fit these in some of my, my, my lathes, tail stocks, because I got quite a few lathes, uh, nothing would work until I found the perfect lathe. So I'm going to show you this in a second. Oh, and yeah, you can go to the bank with this technique. So I think this is the lathe that it fits. So I've got, I don't have a, a, a counter shaft on this lathe. I'm going to go buy myself another counter shaft. But I did fix this motor. This is a very old motor in the back here. What does this say? It's a done... Dummer, dumb, blah, 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 motor, D-O, D-U-M-O-R-E, dumbor, dumbor motor. It's a dumb motor. So there's a little picture of the motor. It's an old motor, man. It's an old motor. So the Dunmore Company, Racine, Wisconsin, Wisconsin Skinny. So that was Miss Minnesota Fats uh, contemporary challenger. It was Wisconsin Skinny. So I, I've used this lathe before because I can see some tape on it here. So let me reposition the camera again. All right, this is the camera reposition with a great shot of my jeans in the background. Nice. Anyway, and my watch, I'm wearing a, this looks a lot like a Rolex, doesn't it? Look at this baby. It's beautiful, 120 click bezel. It's got a Cyclops on it that I had to realign. I had to pop this off and put the Cyclops and line it and put the Cyclops back on. It's from San Martin out of AliExpress, around 350, 350 bucks, all solid, uh, stainless steel. It looks like a Rolex Submariner. No one can tell the difference from a from a distance. Uh, it is 200 meters. It does have a screw-in crown. It's got solid end links on it. Uh, gorgeous watch, solid end links, probably a little dirty because I've been wearing it for a while. Love this watch. It's got stainless steel, three something, 315 stainless steel, whatever the heck that is. Um, when I shine this up, I got a little smudgy right now because I've been wearing it for the day. But it's got a ceramic bezel on the outside. It also has a, uh, a what's a crystal called? The good type crystal. Anyway, 
<laughs> Memories like the music used to the anyway. Uh, so I love the clasp here too. So it's got a very nice clasp here. You just press that in like that. You can see that and it squeezes it squeezes in on the jobby doohickey that's on this side, right there, that little knobby. So the clasp goes over and it's machined. This is a machine clasp, so it's not pressed, very high end. And then just like the Rolexes, because it looks exactly like the Rolex Submariner uh, thing, thingamajabi doohickey. And then you go like that down there. And this actually, when you have, when you do that, this has a little tiny link right here. And of course, like all these little little link things, it presses in and out. It's got a spring in it. So when you press that, it actually presses it in so that this fastens around that hole. So when you go like this and press it, it does that so it's secure with this because that little link pops into that hole a bit. So so this is my watch I'm wearing today. So this is a watch check. Highly recommended, highly recommend this watch. I think this though has the Seiko in the 35, the uh, NH35 move in it, in it. My other one, my other watch, I've got two of these uh, from from this company, San Martin, S-A-N-M-A-R-T-I-N uh, on AliExpress. They're friggin' excellent company actually. Um, they don't say it's a Rolex, so they're not. They don't want to get in trouble. Um, but uh, but it looks like a Rolex, it, and it doesn't have the uh, the N, the NH35 movement as the Seiko built movement. It's not the ro quality of a Rolex movement, of course, because Rolex movements uh, basically they spend months putting that movement together and burnishing pivots and doing all kinds of crap with that. So, but you know what? It feels great. It works great. It's got a, a great uh, movement in it. It runs at it runs I think at 21.6. So the the beat or the uh, the, the uh, frequency of it is 21.600. Um, I I tested it and checked it out on my watch uh, regulation device measurement device my Wishichi 1900. I bought the better one um, and it's pretty darn accurate. So love it. Uh, feels super good. But anyway, that's my watch check. So. Here's my old, my old lathe. It should have a show called My Old Lathe. And I don't even know the brand of this thing. It looks like a Bowley, but I don't think there's a, oh, there is a brand. So let me just grab this and show y'all what this is. If I take this stock, the headstock off like that, and I gotta make sure, see, I've got that oiled and everything, right? So that's nicely oiled. So there's the headstock for this thing. I can't remember how much work I did on this, but I did strip it down and clean it and everything, so which I do all the time. So that's that, and you put the oil in underneath here, so it's got a crack probably. No, actually you unscrew this baby, push it back, and then there's a whole a groove on top, and that's where you put the oil in. You make sure it's well oiled. And then I just turn it around until I feel some friction here. So, And then this will spin, and here's this here, which is in mint condition. Um, and this is, let me look at the name while I show you. So it's, oh yeah, it's a Webster Whitcomb, Webster Whitcomb hard. And that's a hard stock, that's a hard uh, headstock. And from my, what I understand, this is the tail stock. And when they build this thing, they build it out of one piece of metal. And they make sure it's absolutely perfectly aligned with respect to the, the head and the tail. And then they cut it out. So... So and you can look up what hard means, but I believe that's what that means. Um, so it's built out of one piece of metal, and so it's always 100% aligned. So I can't remember when I picked this up, but it's got a nice lathe bed here, and I bought it, I, I have it uh, on a Bowley stand. So I've used this a few times. I know that because I've got uh, some masking tape on here to prevent reflection from coming back at me with my very nice uh, tip over tool rest. And I did file the end here, so this thing is flat as crap. So the the gravers don't jump and stuff as you're trying to move, as you're trying to grave. Otherwise, you have a grave situation. All right, pause for laughter. Good good comedians would always pause for laugh. Eh? So that's my comic, whatever. So then I just tighten that. This headstock also has a, you know, you can like a, all good headstocks. Uh, let me just bring this back again. My God, my God. Like all good headstocks, you tighten it using the lever in the back here, like that. And then this little pin here, like that, goes into these little holes here. And that's when you're when you're needing to align it for if you're making, say, and I think I may have sharpened that, I'm not sure. But if you're, say, making uh, a stem, 
and you got to move it a quarter position to flatten. Like you move it 180, do the other side, and you move it 180, and then you move it, you know, to the other sides because you're making a stem by filing four sides of the of something around. So you need to use this to do that, or if you're making gears, or if you need just to set the positions. So. Uh, for gear making and stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna put this back in and I want to see if this works. So here's Here's my evil plan. Let me just put this in place like this And I've got this I'll put I remember I, I think I farted with the motor to make sure that this thing aligned properly, but But I've got it aligned there. I'll spin the motor for you just so you can see it work uh, And then I gotta make sure that this is aligned. Is that good enough? That's probably good enough. I'm not sure if that's too tight or not, but that's pretty good there. That's a tight, tight bow. Tight. So it's pretty tight here. You don't need it really tight. And again, these this this uh, belt I made, so that's fishing line there. It's five, uh, basically number five fishing line, right? So I usually fish with the five pound test. Uh, I fish with 10 pound or 12 pound test normally when I'm fishing, but this is five pound test I bought. Then I just sewed it around. I showed in one of my other videos a technique of making one of these. Um, and the motor itself, it needs to be oiled. So you have to put drop the oil in here on the bottom. There's an O reservoir on the bottom of this thing right there. So you, you basically, it'll collect the oil and then it'll oil the bushings inside. So this thing runs smooth. So that's the theory anyway. Um, and there's also, I believe, this one here is this is the direction of the of the motor so and then another another oil oil cap down here to collect the oil and stuff so anyway i haven't run this thing in like a year maybe two years actually so there we go that's that and now let me look at this i'm going to put the tailstock in and i tried putting this tailstock into a different lathe and it wouldn't work so it wouldn't it didn't want to go anywhere so because it's all about fitting properly Right, so this is this stale stock. This looks like it's loose here too, man. So uh, I may have to adjust this thing here to make sure it's squeezing down on the tailstock correctly. But anyway, that's it there. And so I would remove this, which is part of the tailstock, right? Let me just back this up again and show you what I'm doing here. This is very interesting stuff, I'm sure. Um, and just like this, I remove this. So this is my this is my seven, this is my eight, eight millimeter diameter, right? So what I did was there's an OD outer diameter and ID inner diameter. So when I take this big ass steel pipe that I bought, right? I bought it with an eight millimeter outer diameter and the inner diameter is seven millimeters. So when I brought my, my nice jobby doohickey pivot making device here like that, I wanted to make sure this fit in here. So if you look at this and say, oh my God, friggin' thing fits. Like, and it fits, what did Jim Carrey say? Like a glove. It fits like a glove. So there you go. So that's perfect. So then phase two is, will it fit in the tailstock or am I screwed, right? Should I turn this tailstock around this way? I'm not sure which way it goes. It may want to go this way, I'm not sure. So there it is in here. This doesn't seem to want to tighten, which is pissing me off a bit. But I'm sure if I'm sure there's there, and it's tight now. But this, I think this needs to be down or out or something. But it is tight now, so I can see I'm moving it, and nothing's moving. So, and this is the little thingamajabby doohickey that this would go through to grab it. So if I push this through here, it better fit, right? So I do this. Does it fit? Does it fit? It just fits. So I look at that and say, okay, does that fit? Uh, it's like not too good, right? So if I try to put this like this into this tailstock, am I screwed or not? It's fitting super tight, right? Which might not be good because I need to be able to tighten this, right? So, so let me look at the brass one. So I go back here and grab the brass one. Here's the brass one. And this brass one fits in here like this. It's pretty tight though. Maybe this is the wrong tailstock I was supposed to use. Because this went in smooth the other day. Maybe it's the wrong one. You think so? Let me cut out. Because I think something's screwy here in the state of Denmark. Because the other one fits perfectly, right? Hang on! 
All right, everything I said was absolutely accurate, except I had the wrong lathe. <laughs> this is a lathe that doesn't work. So I'm going to take this lathe, uh, take the belt off so it doesn't get stretched, because it's still a good lathe. It's got the tail stock in here. I'm going to throw this in here because uh, I like to show my failures. So this is not the watch, the, the lathe that I had that would work on this. It was a different lathe, which I... I have on my lap right now, as you can see. So let me just get this lathe the hell out of here. So this is the lathe that works. This is the lathe I know I know. This is the lathe I know. So, and I'm not gonna be able to, I'm just gonna prop it up somehow to show you this because I won't be able to do what I wanted to do because I don't have, I can't set this up unless I put this in a Borel stand or drill the biggest friggin' hole in the world. I'll just check and see if I have a hole under my desk. So I'm gonna hold this up with my hand for a second, but I'm gonna lay it down later. So this lathe here is a, what's the name of this lathe? Let's just look at the camera in the back. This is a Lampert lathe. It's solid as hell, it's heavy as hell. Um, and I like the headstock on this baby, and I recall oiling it. And these are little, these are basically little ball bearings that push in with a spring, so you push this down with your oiler and then put the oil in. I've oiled this before and I've used it and I've cleaned it before as well. So, and this, there's also a freaking collets in here, right? So, and then this, just like the other one, just like the other lathe, you, there's a pin here, right? In the back, let me see, what do I, how do I show you this? This pin here is in the back for, for basically, there. That's solid now, so for getting your whatever positions you need for whatever work you're doing, the pin is there. Uh, these are there's not as many separations here, but in general you can do the ones you want if you're going to make a stem or something. That does not have. Oh yeah, it is a flip over tool rest. I didn't think this was a flip over tool rest. It's actually a nice flip over tool rest, and I've got this thing down here tightened up nicely, right? So it's tight as they say in Newfoundland, and and also. Um, so this tailstock, you loosen this up, I'm sure, like that, and then you can slide that out, and that's the tailstock here. So let's just, let's work with the tailstock for a second, okay? And I'll put this thing on the ground, because it's heavy as hell, and I can't show you how this is done with this in my hand. So here it is there, let's just move the camera. Active camera movement, oh my god. This is so exciting, it's better than the new Bruce Willis movies. And I'm really upset with Bruce, because he keeps making these friggin' movies that are like D-grade or whatever. So this has got, there you go, so it's a WW, WW lathe, and it looks like they filed this down to have this work properly in there. And this tightens the uh, the tailstock bar, draw bar or bar, so I take this out now. Now let's see if this pipe works. So get the stainless steel pipe in here, and see if I can put that all the way through. Oop, look at that, and it's actually pretty friggin' snug in there. And then I tighten this up like that, and the steel bar ain't going anywhere, right? So, so what I do here, what I want to do here, is I want to measure this bar and then cut it. So if I measure this bar to be right at the tip, because I want, I just want this bar to pretend it's the part of the tailstock. So I just need to measure this, put that right at the tip, and then tighten this up. And let me go, let me get myself a marker. Marker. There's a friend of my son's when he was a boy. His name was Mark, but I used to call him Marker all the time. I think it pissed him off. Anyway, so just want to mark this here. Like that. And I'm going to saw that off on the inside edge of that mark. I'm going to go down in my Frankenstein lab and saw that thing off. And while I'm there, I'm going to loosen this up and I'm going to measure this one too, which is the B-Rass one. And this was even tighter. It feels good too, and the brass is a little softer, so I just make sure it's aligned to the very end like that. So that's perfect. Is there any marks in there? Eh, it looks okay. So that's a line there. Um, this one I think I already smoothed in the end here on this one here. Let me see. Yeah, maybe I'll do it on this end. So because I already did some work, kind of filing the end or smoothening it. So so that's pretty good there at the end. And I do, do the exact same thing. Maybe I'll stick it out a little further so that the bit can go out the end a bit more. A bit more. Get that? A joke. And I'll do the same thing. Tighten that just a bit. A tad. 
a tad, as my dad used to say all the time, or still says actually, and take my marker and stick it in and make a mark right there. And then I gotta cut this on the inside. So I'll go to the Frankenstein lab. He's alive, he's alive. And cut both ends. I know you think I'm crazy, but you're right. So I'm gonna go cut those both ends and I'm gonna come back and let's see if this thing, let's see if this baby works. Let's see if this baby works. Oh, I'm back, I'm back. So I cut both pipes on the end and then I use my buffer and I get rid of all the burrs. First I cut it with my Dremel tool and then I use the file to flatten it and then I use the, the um, I just use some sandpaper to smoothen out the end and then I use some fake steel wool to finish it off so it's nice and smooth. So now let's see the brass one in action. So there's the brass one and I'm going to push this in. So I'm going to get another picture here. All right, just a bit of a different angle. So there's the uh, tailstock here. So loosen the screw up here. And now I want to make sure that this fits in here first. All right, so let's check that out. Oh man, that's a tight fit, but it's fitting nicely. So look at that. There it is. And you can still see on the end, there's still real estate on the end for this thing to get through, right? So not sure whether that is going to be an issue or not. And let me check this one here. Not sure which one had a bigger outer diameter. So that's the same, which is good. And there's still some real estate on the inside there before it gets to the end, right? So again, not sure if that's going to be an issue with this tailstock. So, so if I throw, I'll throw the stainless steel one in here first. And this is basically a sleeve inside of a sleeve. So I put that in like that and then tighten this. And then this would go on the end like that. That's nice actually. So that's like this on the end like that. And so that's aligned. And then I tighten this like so. So that's tightening that sleeve that's in there. Um, oh, one problem I have here is that the sleeve, the sleeve is not tightening um, on this, on the bar here. So if I put the bar in, let me just throw that in and see if I get some action here. So if I put this bar in here, which is centering the, uh, the end here, look at this here, I put that through and it just makes it to the end. So that does fit there which is nice, right? So that's fitting. So I don't run out of real estate on this side, which I thought I was going to. So that's good, that'll work. So if I wanna fit a smaller a smaller one on here for for a watch, I'm just turning this, turning this here into a smaller one. I may have to put some glasses on here. And then moving this around until I feel it going in place, which is right about there. And then tighten that up like that. Now the problem I have now is that this puppy dog is rotating. Um, plus I would like a little more real estate. So if I le loosen this up a bit, uh, it's gonna push this in more. I'm gonna push this out more, which is pushing this in more. I'm not sure if that's gonna cause more of a problem. I don't know, let me see. I just pull that out just a bit like that. Then I've got further to go, but I can put this in more. So it actually doesn't make a difference because it's still the same thing. So I'll just bottom this out like that, push that in and tighten that. And again, I wanna loosen that up, loosen this up like so. Let me see, which way's loose? I think this way's loose. Loosen that up, push it to the end here and then find the right, uh, there we go. And then find the right hole. Hole, hole. I'm gonna turn this around so you guys can see it on camera. So I just do this and say I'm doing a really small pocket watch. Loosen that and then turn this until it sits in the right hole. There it is there. So it's sitting in the right hole right now. And then tighten that so I know they're aligned. So my big problem now, which if I have this down, which I think I want to do that because I want the weight down here to be pulling down on it. That way when I loosen it like that and then move it, I loosen this up like that, move this. I can see what the heck I'm doing on the top, right? So 
that's that's perfect like that so i know it reaches which is nice because i almost ran out of real estate so it just reaches look at that so there it is there and that's the hole for example and then i would tighten this here uh this direction i think to tighten that so this isn't going to rotate anymore that way but the big problem now is that sleeve on the inside is moving and i can't use this to tighten it so what I should do is I press down enough on this, right? I can make a mark like that. Do that twice maybe, and I can make a mark on that sleeve. Actually, it is tightening now, but I, I'm bending the sleeve to tighten it, which I don't want to do, right? So that's tightening, but it's bending the sleeve to tighten it. What I'd rather do is if I unscrew this like so, and then take this out, with the sleeve, there's the sleeve coming out with it, right? And if I look really carefully at this thing, I can see where that mark is. So I'm going to put my other glasses on for a second because I want to be able to see that mark, right? So let me look really carefully, see if I can see where that mark is. Um, where is that mark? It's right there. The mark is right there. So, and if I take a, um, let me just do this again to make sure I have that mark right. So put this in like this. Keep that on the top. Like that. And then if I put the screw in the top like this. Let me just do this. This is a smart thing to do, I think. So I want to get, I'll just take a blue marker like that. And I'll mark the tip of that screw if it's possible to mark that. And that's a flat screw, so I'll just mark the crap out of the bottom of it here. Like that. Now, with any luck, when I screw this back in, it'll leave a mark on that tube. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that'll happen, by the way, but I'm tr I'm gonna try. Just move it back and forth a few times. Like that, and I want to take that out, and then push this out to see if there's a mark. I use the other pipe to push this one out. And is there a mark? Uh, sort of. It looks like it's right. Looks like it's right there. Right there. So, so I've got that right there. Now, what I'd like to do is is cut that out if I can. Can I drill a hole? To cut that out so this screw goes all the way through that's what I'd like to do um, but I'm gonna do that later because it shouldn't be a big problem I want to finish this video so so just let's pretend that I did that and I can squeeze that and for now I'll just squeeze it with the screw itself right so I'll just put this back in and line that up and see line that up see what I'm gonna do here didn't I say line that up somehow you see, there it is there on the top. And push that all the way in. Like so. I don't see the mark on the inside. It's weird. I do not see the mark on the inside. Is this thing rotating or? No, it isn't. It's strange. I'll use the other one as a guide to bring it in. Oh, there's the mark. So I can rotate this just a bit. Because I can see the little blue mark on the inside. See that? There's the blue mark. And let me just put that in and just pretend there's a hole there, okay? Because I'm going to, later on, I think I'm going to drill a hole. And that will grab this as, as needed. So I'm going to have this upside down. Tighten that a bit. That's upside down. And that's now aligned up, right? Or aligned, as they say. So now, the question is, when I'm drilling, when I'm drilling with this, I'm hoping that the drill bit reaches here and goes through so I'm going to try this out because basically this will be the tailstock and I'll be pushing that towards the headstock and the part so in the perfect world this part here like the balance here would be on the end like so right and then you'd have that lined up in the uh, in the lays and if I put this through like this yeah it's going to go through yeah so there it is and that is now lined up 
and it will go to that hole. There it is. So that's lined up and I've got, if you look at the back end of this, I got plenty of room to push that through, right, with that bit. Plenty of room back here to push that through to drill this out. So if I have, I'll, I'll grab a, I'll put this in a collet for the hell of it and show you. All right, so there it is, tail stock's in right now. Get rid of this tip over tool rest so you can see what's going on. And then my lathe part, I'm, I'm going to actually get rid of the collet that's here. Because there's a big ass collet in here. It's a uh, 50, actually, a Levine 50. So get rid of this. And I just happened to pick the right collet right off the bat that fit this particular part. So I can take this part out of the, uh, the balance out here and then get this collet in place, or this part in place. Is this working here? <coughs> I want to make sure this fits properly. <coughs> Excuse me. Bam! Loud. Alright, there we go. So that's there, and I'll just tighten this up a bit. It uh, seems like it's threading it a bit, but anyway, no problem. So now I'll put this part in here. So, And this part does require a new, a new balance, a new pivot on the end. So if I squeeze that part, is that in there good? Yeah, it is. So there it is in there nicely, spinning around. So this here then would go, would meet up. And I got to loosen the bottom of this tip over tool rest and just move this whole freaking thing over. And I know I'm doing this because this thing would be on a bench, so it's a little trickier. And I got to cough again. No, I don't have COVID. I just got dust in my lungs. So there we go, that's the configuration. I got this set up here. Um, let's just pretend, I'll, I'll press, put a little pressure on this here. So there, that kind of stays in place now because it's just warping the stainless steel. So that's not moving anymore. Um, and that looks like, it looks like that from that side, right? And there's my balance. So if I move it from this side, you see the balance and then you see the, uh, the configuration there. So if I push this inward, I want to. I'd be wanting to drill a hole or just re-pivot this balance. So I want to. I'd want to pick a drill bit that was the right size. This obviously is not the right size. So I want to basically pick the right size for the drill bit and not screw this up. So lay this down for a second and see if I can redo this a bit. I'm at a shitty angle here, by the way. So I'm trying to show you this, but not screw this up. So just move this in a bit like that and tighten that just a bit here and so I want the bit to I'll back this off a bit I'm saying a bit a lot man. and I'm trying to find the hole that's right here and it's just see this little jobby doohickey stuck in there jobby doohickey that might be the right one there I need to put my glasses in a little closer so I can see what the hell I'm doing here. Oh, there's a perfect one right there. So that one right there. And turn this thing the, the proper way. So that centering stake is in there. and uh, It's grabbing that. I had a look and it's perfect with the hole. So you do that first, right? So you know that's perfectly aligned. And then you take this bit here and make sure the taper is right. This is super awkward, by the way, the way I'm doing this on camera, because I don't have this. It's a single hole uh, stand for this. So I put this through the back. All right, let me just back up a bit so you can see what I'm up to. So I put this through the back, like so. And then I feed that in. And of course, it's the right size, because I've got that tube in there, the tube in there and then once I get that that's the right place for it right here I think that bits probably a bit big for the hole I got so let me look here the other problem I have is the this bit on the end is a bit off a bit off so I want to make sure that gets through that hole I can turn that backwards to make sure it gets through the hole. 
I actually think it's too big. So let me back that off again. This is boring as hell, right? And I'll just, just for the sake of explaining this, I'm going to try to find a hole that makes sense here. These holes are way too small for this bit. So if I just back it off some more. All right, there's the perfect hole. So that went through. And if I do a close-up, give me a close-up, give me a close-up. There's the close-up. So this thing does go through, as you can see. So this would be perfect. I'm going to back this off. I think I'll tighten this. What the hell? Right? And then I'll make sure that this hole is perfectly aligned because the bit's a little bit loose because of the way I've tapered. Put like an M3 taper on it. So this thing would be a little bit loose. I just have to figure out a, a better way of attaching these bits to this bar. And now I stick this through and I can basically, I use the word basically too much, make sure this is properly aligned. It might get in close with my face. And loosen this up. Line that up perfectly. And then tighten it. That's good there. Good there. It's perfectly aligned. Tighten that a bit more. So that should be perfect there. Look down again. Hitting the cameras and everything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Alright, so that's perfectly aligned right now. And now I have to push this this thingamajabi doohickey right over the top of that. Look at that. Right there, like that. Like this. Right, and then tighten that. And I'm not sure if I have the exact right hole right now, but that's the theory behind this then. And then that's tightened. And then when I put the, uh, give you the big picture again here, when I put this through the back, like so. And I'm wearing my watch making glasses, but I got my loop down, which is screws up your your vision. I gotta make sure this goes through the hole too, right? So, and of course, like I said before, there's that taper problem. There we go. So now it's going through the hole, right? So now, as you can see, let me get in really close here. There's a really close close-up. See if it does a nice close-up. There we go. It's over on the edge, but I'll leave it there. Or I'll just move the whole friggin' mat in front here. There we go. So now you can see the bit spinning here. And if this were the lathe, or if this lathe was spinning, this would be doing this, right? The same time I'm doing, I'm moving this just a bit. I don't even have to move it because the lathe is spinning the part. But just to make sure it's centered, I'm moving it a bit. And that's that's basically drilling the hole uh, that I need for this particular watch, right? So I'm just pushing this in now and turning this with with the lathe on. So this is spinning like that, it's perfectly lined up, and my little tubies worked. And I'll just back up here again, so you can see that at a big angle here, uh, like that. So all I was doing was holding that and spinning it like this, just to make sure that all worked, and it did. So that stays steady on the on this side if I don't move this, but if I move this, it turns. But I don't really need to move this. I just need to apply pressure as I'm spinning this and put a little bit of oil on. So that's all lined up. That works. The only thing I need to do for that tube is I can leave it like that if I want, because if this spins, it's not going to be a big deal, but I'd rather not. So I'm going to drill a hole in the top of that tube. There's the other two. So I'm going to end up, you know, drilling the perfect hole. And I do have a drill bit to do that. The perfect hole on top of that thing that meets the the diameter of this particular screw here on the bottom that you're looking at, right? That way I don't have any movement. I could push a little harder and it's going to warp that tube down, but, you know, but other than that, because if I, if I undo it, like I just tighten it like that, you see how that spins around? It spins around, but this whole configuration stays in place. There's no, there's no problem because it's staying in place, right? But I don't want it to spin around. I'd rather it to sit on the bottom. And this particular lathe here is I got a one bolt in the back, so I basically had no alternative. You know, I got all these washers and a bolt in the back. I had no alternative but to just do it this way. So I'll set this lathe up, uh, likely in my basement, 
um, for doing this particular job. And then I'll just be able to use this lathe uh, to repivot. So that's the repivoting tool and me adapting this with a, with a tube. And that's the whole story. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me get a picture of that. There we go. Look at that. Oh my God. It looks much better upside down, right? It looks much better like this because it looks like there's actually something going on. There's a reflection there and it won't zoom with the reflection. There you go. Look at that. That is perfect. That'll re-pivot from that side. No problemo. Thanks a lot and please subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoyed this little jobby doohickey job.